up here with Milwaukee Top 8 Case Tournament. Hello, yeah. So we had a case tournament today for Maze of Millennial. Uh, Millennium. Millennium, yes. Um, so uh, first time playing for Team One X, and it was a pretty fun time. Uh, so I came in piloting a pretty weird deck. I faced a lot of Fire King, I faced a lot of Rescue Ace. I think it was three Fire King, two Rescue Ace, and one Cash Tira. Lost to one Fire King and one Rescue Ace. And the deck that I was piloting today is called Volcanic Horus Snake Guy. You got a Trifecta okay. Archetypes. Right. Well, we're gonna get right into that. Yeah, so let's take a look through the main deck and I'll explain how the deck functions. So first off, we're gonna go with the main engine, which is Volcanic, and we're starting with Triple Volcanic Trooper. Trooper right. here is the uh, starter and, you know, heat and blood of the deck. Uh, he's a Rota on summon for any Volcanic card. Uh, so Spell Trap or Monster as well as has the additional ability of pitching a card from hand to the graveyard to then give your opponent a bomb token. Oh. Bomb tokens are a thousand thousand token that when destroyed, you'll take, the opponent will take 500 damage. This is great because you have cards that activate based on your opponent having monsters. So if you're going first, you still give them something to pop with your other cards. So cards that Trooper is grabbing, you've got your typical volcanic shells. Feel free to notice that uh, we've got, you know, the nice dual terminal rarities of these guys here. Okay. Yeah. Um, Michelle's great, and uh, he works alongside not just the Volcanic Engine for providing hand fodder for discarding abilities, but also for the Horse Engine, which we'll see later on. Okay. Right. Then, we've got the new member of the pack, which is Volcanic Rimfire. Uh, Rimfire is cool, because if he's sent to the graveyard from anywhere, deck, hand, or field, uh, he has two effects, and each of those you can use once per turn. The first one being, you can banish him from Graveyard at Resolution to send another Volcanic from your deck to the Graveyard. If you don't see Shell, but you see Rimfire, you want to load up on Shells, you can get it directly as a Foolish. Uh, his second effect is that uh, you can banish a, Vol a Blaze Accelerator card from Face Up Field or Graveyard in order to place one other from the deck. Which is cool is if you have a graveyard uh, blaze accelerator, let's say your opponent has anti-spell, this places the spell, so it gets around anti-spell, which is kind of cool, so you can get your volcanic blaze accelerator online. Cool. The last monster in the arsenal here, volcanic emperor. This is your typical pitch off of Rimfire. Emperor states you can banish from your graveyard up to three pyros, uh, three pyros exactly, or one blaze accelerator from your field or graveyard to summon him. His on summon effect, deals 500 times the amount of banished pyros, so typically 15, or at least 500 if you're doing the Blaze Accelerator. Life points matters a lot in this deck. So you're dealing burn damage, and then you also get to additionally set a Volcanic Trap from your deck. There are two Volcanic Traps that are great. You have Volcanic Inferno, which is a continuous trap that acts similar to Tierlement Suliak. If your opponent activates a monster effect, you banish a Volcanic from your graveyard, it deals 500 damage and then also will negate that effect. Okay. It's not a targeting effect. If the monster leaves the field, that effect will still get negated. Next one, it also has a cool effect. Uh, it doesn't really come up that much. You can recycle two of your banished uh, volcanics back to the bottom of your deck. It's great for recycling shells and keeping one in the graveyard. Next one is Volcanic Emission. First effect, you can summon one volcanic from your deck or add it to your hand. Cheats out, so uh, you can ignore summoning condition, so it can summon Emperor directly as a 3100. Uh, the second effect to note is the uh, target a Pyro on the field. If you targeted your opponent's monster's Pyro, they will take damage equal to that monster's attack. If you target your own, they will take damage equal to half. So typically you'll keep Volcanic Emperor up and there'll be 1550 burn damage right there for the free from the emission. Next we'll move on to the Volcanic Spells. Spell cards, you're running three Volcanic Blaze Accelerator. This is your typical add off of Volcanic Trooper. In order to activate this card, however, we do have to run a Garnet known as Blaze Accelerator. Because in order to activate, you have to send it from hand or deck to the graveyard. Uh, this card's amazing. It's uh, once per turn per copy for each effect. So if you were to, for example, activate this card uh, and then replace it with Rimfire, uh, it's first effect is it can summon a volcanic from your hand for free once per turn, similar to like Kashira Birth summoning one of the banished uh, Kashira monsters. The other effect is a better effect. It's uh, target a monster your opponent controls, typically the bomb token you give them, and uh, you destroy it. And then afterwards you send a level one pyro from deck to grave. So already we have some targets, rimfire and shells. 
Okay. This is just phenomenal. It just turns things online. Gets out. You can get your Rimfire, get your Emperor, banish the Accelerator to summon Emperor. It's all off of the Trooper. Huh? That's the volcanic portion of the deck. The great thing about this too is it works with the next archetype we're going to talk about since we have a few level 1 fires. Next archetype we're going to talk about is Snake Eyes. You've got Dia Bellstar, typical. Uh, if you're playing a fire deck, you should play her. You play her with her three wanted posters here. Mm -hmm. Just searches Dia Bell, gets you a draw card. Cannot hurt a, one bit. If you're playing fire, you got to spend the 350 to be at the best for it. One original Snake Eyes, it's self explanatory. It summons a level one fire from your deck. Can send a card to the graveyard as well for loading things up. It's typical, it's just insane. This package should not be as expensive as it is, but that's Yu-Gi-Oh right now, unfortunately. Next up, the Snake Eyes. We are just running one of each of these guys. We have Snake Eyes Ash, <coughs> Snake Eyes Oak, and Flamberg Dragon. Ash is your typical target off of your uh, OSCS, uh, the original Sinful Spoil. Ash just gets you any level one pyro. You can add Oak, Rimfire, or Shell. And um, then he's uh, sent himself to summon either Oak or Flamberg Dragon. Oak can bring back Revived uh, from the Graveyard or Banished, a level one pyro. Uh, Oak can bring back your Banished Rimfire that you used to pitch your Emperor, and so then you get to use your Rimfire's second effect as well to recycle Blaze Accelerator. So you get both effects off of one copy, thanks to Oak. Uh, and then both of these have the effect to summon a Snake Eyes from deck by sending itself another face-up card. Uh, so you can send Volcanic Blaze Accelerator, for example, or you could send uh, any other, the Rimfire you bring back with Oak. So get out Flamberg Dragon. You can put a monster on the field or the grave your graveyard to the spell trap zone. Typically, if your opponent has a problem monster, I like to put Fenrir to the back row because he ain't doing anything anymore. And it works out pretty well. Okay. The other effect is that you just bring two level ones back, and uh, that just gets you Link Fodder uh, or Exe Fodder, which is fantastic. Uh, he's also a level eight, so he synergizes with our next package that we're going to be talking about. Final package of the deck, uh, Horus. As you typically play with Horus, you're playing a three-three of Imseti and Sark. Self-explanatory. It's a pitch one and himself to go even. You get King Sark, and you get an extra draw. Deck is a 47 card deck. I will mention this right now. So we like card drawing cards. Why is it 47? Well, you see, I'm a fan of running each of the names one copy. Uh, typically, this deck just loves pumping out bodies for Link Fodder, Exceed Fodder, and uh, typically Advantage State at all times on the board. Board is where you live and die with this deck. Uh, King Sark synergizes with Snake Eye for setting up for Oak to bring something back. King Sark synergizes with Volcanics by putting Shells. Shells can get more fodder for the King Sark, so you might as well run all four names, because your Shells 1, 2, and 3 can get you everything with the Imseti getting you the King Sark. Yeah, the synergy is just phenomenal. Fun fact with these guys too, uh, they dodge Super Poly because they are all different attributes and all different typings. Super Poly is a bit popular right now, so I find it when I end up on a board of just one King Sark and the four names and pass, a lot of people have difficulty outing it. Uh, pay attention, King Sark prevents Dark Hole effects from popping your Horus monsters. Uh, they dodge AoEs, they can only be popped by targeted effects. Also it has a damage step effect of the first time you want uh, to battle. You can send the monster to the graveyard instead of resulting in battle, which is phenomenal against Fire King, uh, since you're able to prevent their graveyard monsters from popping off because you destroyed one in battle. We're going to go into generic cards now. Two Fenrir. Uh, I don't want three. I'm already running a big deck as it is. He is there just as an advantage on the board state. You play Fenrir. Fenrir can grab Fenrir, you know, force a bait, get another card for discard fodder as well as force outs, imperms, and anything like that so that our main engines don't suffer. He also just forces weird interactions because your opponent's trying to play around you banishing their stuff. Cool. Um, other than that, he's pretty much usually just pitched as the extra copy from Dia Bellstar or sent as a link fodder. <coughs> Triple Ash Blossom. You just need to stop original Sinful Spoil Snake Eye from summoning their level ones. Ponyx or Rescue Ace Fire Hydrant from the deck or Ash. So. Ash Blossom does the job for that. Okay. Next we're doing uh, three Forbidden Droplet. I think this card's phenomenal, this format. 
you get to half the opponent's big bodies as well as the fact that you get to do discarding your fodder from your hand so if you have some uh horse monsters stuck in your hand this can get them out it also lets you dodge cards like Impermanent Valor with your normal summon like Trooper, who's very integral. So if you're able to get this around going second, it's great. When I'm going first, typically I'll side it out, just because uh, if I'm going first, I try to aim for the kill. This is good for going blind into game one, though. Next up, we got uh, Called by the Grave at one. You have to run Called by. Uh, too many graveyard effects this format. I wish it was at two like OCG, but uh, we can't have nice things. Triple Imperm. Format calls for it. If you try to play around it right, you hit the Phonics, you hit the Rescue Ace Hydrants, you hit the Turbulence uh, at the right time, this card can do wonders for you. And uh, you need to stop your opponent from making their typical turn one plays. It's the best card to do it next to Baylor. I was thinking about dropping droplets for Baylors for that, but I do like dodging cards myself. And then finally, the funny cards. We are running <laughs> one Inori Fire and one Spiritual Fire Art, uh, Kurenai. So, how do these guys work? Well, you see, there's a funny thing here. In Ari Fire, in order to summon from the deck, you need to send a Spellcaster and a level four or lower fire from your field to the graveyard to summon it from the deck. We just happen to have both Diabell Star and Imseti being uh, Spellcasters, and they don't mind going to the graveyard. You can also use Fire Charmer, Hita, or Dark Charmer, Dark to do the job. Typically I'm using these guys though for Inari Fire. And the reason for that is that if he's sent from the field to the graveyard, you get to search for Spiritual Fire Art Kurenai. During your opponent's turn, if you control your uh, Volcanic Emperor, Kurenai will then uh, tribute it and they will take 3100 damage. That can typically end the game right there. You want typically Trooper and Imseti or Dia Bellstar, and you have full combo, and this will deal like 8,500 damage on your opponent's draw phase. Nice. So that's how I typically first turn kill, is getting that set up with the Inari Fire and the Kurenai. Um, it's really nice, it's powerful, and he's great for just being fodder for link material. Because okay. he's uh, his effect search is uh, if he sent to the graveyard, so... Okay, so did, um, how often did I combo with all today? Uh, so I got Inari uh, once today. Uh, typically, I get him. Off, I got him off more often. However, today it was just uh, playing a bit more honest, I suppose. But um, no, I'm happy with it though. I wouldn't get rid of it because it just enables you. You know, if your opponent opens up hand traps wrong or no, like no interaction, you just typically get a free uh, game with that. Or if they are unable to process what to hand trap against this, because it's such a it's a rogue strategy using volcanics. Nobody knows what they do. Okay. So you're able to, you know, benefit off of a surprise element with that. Um, people are playing outs to like interactions between their turns, but this just ignores the next turn essentially. Okay. So that's for it for main deck. We're gonna go into the extra deck now. And in the extra deck, we'll start off with the uh, Exceed monsters. Oh. So these are two rank eights. Uh, you're able to do this with these Horus monsters as well as uh, either Emperor or the uh, Flamberg Dragon. Uh, Coach King, he is awesome. He is a great time card. You check the top card of your deck uh, three times, essentially, unless they imperm him. But you'll check it three times, well, one for each material he'll have. And uh, if you reveal a monster, they take 800 damage, and you get to draw that card anyways. Uh, so if you you can win if you just get a burn affected for uh, game three at the time. <clears throat> it also gives you an advantage state of drawing into more of your deck, which you want to do. Next up, we have Zombie Vampire, which does more digging uh, for two instead of three bodies. Um, you're able to detach one and mill both players, top four of the deck, to the grave, summon a monster among them. Uh, because everyone's playing fire decks and Dia Bellstar engine, it's pretty funny when you hit Dia Bellstar off them and then you can uh, use their Dia Bellstar to get your Sinful Spoil engine working. I've had that come up multiple times while using this card, and it's very, very satisfactory. <clears throat> Next up, our rank ones. <clears throat> Lyralisks, because of Snake Eyes and Volcanics, you're able to end up on level 1 bodies pretty easily. If you're going second, you'll go for the Lyralisk Assembled Nightingale to go face and then make Zeus. And then this one actually came up this week for me. I had played against the Scareclaw deck, and did you know the Scareclaw monsters are hard ones per turn special summons? This one is uh, when your opponent special summons a monster, you can detach a material to bounce it back to their hand. And that's not a hard ones per turn on this either. Uh, 
I've also considered running the other Lyrilisk rank one, the Starling, uh, Starling, uh, Recital Starling, because that one allows you to grab a DD Crow if you want to main deck one as a tech. It's not a bad option this format. I just typically don't find myself going into the rank ones, but it's all matchup dependent. Sometimes your opponent will special summon something and you can bounce it back. Like Dia Bellstar, great. She's stuck in the hand for the rest of the turn. Love to see it. And then, yeah, we have Zeus here and Typhon. I don't want to run Typhon, but there are just situations where if the opponent has enough negations up, I need to use one of my monsters to make this big body to try and contest with the board a bit. But I would typically want not want to run it, but those situations come up when people are running in permit times three, effect failure times three, and Ash Blossom. And now yeah, even uh, Ghost Spell, which happened today. So yeah, if your advantage state just gets taken away, he at least lets you try to clean up the board going second. So that's it for the Exceed Monsters. We'll go into the Link Monsters now, which are integral for all of our shenanigans. We've got ourselves the uh, Heat Soul line. Not only does uh, the Salmon Great Sunlight Wolf let you recycle a card back to the hand for discard fodder. Um, these two also go into the Heat Soul, and Heat Soul can either be a big body it's easy to make them a uh, 3300 just because you're summoning so many bodies in a turn but also the going first drawing an extra card you can never hate that you want to get access to your hand traps or more engine it's easy with him next up from the uh more generic side of things we'll go into our link twos here you've got sp if you're not playing sp this format i feel sorry for you this card just like puts the difference between who's going to be in top eight and who's not this card's just stupid i would run two of them honestly but it's not worth buying another one uh hita it's a fire format it's a fire deck uh it's a spell caster it does everything it summons inari fire from the deck it steals ash blossoms it can steal snake eyes ash if the opponent has it uh it's phenomenal i love it can't go wrong best girl dark people running dia bellstar engine take their dia bellstar if you want it it's great um there's not much to say on that. IP Mask, uh, being able to make a quick SP is nice. Going into your higher link fodders, because she's a Cyverse, you could make the uh, Decode Act Heat Soul with the Link Karibo. Typically doesn't happen, but it's f something funny food for thought. And then our last two here, we've got Appalooza. We end on so many leftover bodies. Might as well make some negate. Usually a three mat negates what I'm making with her. And then uh, White Woman Jump Scare. Uh, underworld goddess um sometimes your opponent just has a problem monster and you need to deal with it you this deck puts on enough bodies that you can just eat up their sp little knight if you want as one of the materials so it's kind of nice um yeah personally if i wanted to drop typhon and white woman i would put in selene and access code instead for uh going second but i think the deck already does so much going second if the opponent deals with it all it's hard to get to that line at that point so these are just good independently for going first or going second. So that's it for the extra deck. And finally, the sideboard. We will start off with my favorite card in this format. Artifact Lancia. Lancia does a lot. Um, if you're able to uh, play against Rescue Ace like I do often, uh, this card prevents Preventer and Turbulence from being played out onto the board. That can literally end their turn. I've had it happen today when I was in my last round against Rescue Ace. I dropped Lancia and they said, all right, I passed turn. They weren't able to do much with it. They just sat on an airlifter and a back row. So that feels great. Uh, Lancia can stop evenly matched when you're going first and you don't make a kill and the opponent's running thrust evenly package or something like this. So Lancia is nice for that in the games two and three. Uh, also can stop Bestials from shenaniganing your uh, Insetis uh, during their turn or something like that. Um, nah, it's just a solid card. Next up we got Droll. Uh, it's, uh, we're in a Droll format. I would main deck it if I ran a smaller deck. Um, but it's also a Spellcaster, which is funny. So you could normal summon it, make your uh, Inari Fireline. It's Droll. We're searching a bajillion cards. It's uh, not much more to it. Uh, Triple Nibiru. Everybody's summoning. My issue against Fire King is dang, they made Arvada. All right, Nibiru's gone unless I can bait the Arvada. 
Uh, Rescue Ace. Good Rescue Ace players could end on like format, or they could make uh, Barone beforehand. But even if you hit Rescue Ace, if you hit it after the turbulence, it's not as impactful. You get a 3k Bonnie on board, which is cool, but it just feels bad. He's really good though in this format. <clears throat> just uh, try and dodge the uh, monster effect or Omni Negate. Uh, Duster and two Cosmic. I, if I could fit it, I would main deck three Cosmic. Uh, everybody's very reliant on spell traps. Do you Star? They set their Sinful Spoil. If you Cosmic it, great. Uh, if you they Fire King, they place their Fire King Island off a of Sanctuary. Get rid of it. They're usually running one Fire King Island anyways, so that's gone and dealt with. You'll love to see it. Um, against Rescue Ace, during end phase, you can get rid of uh, one of their annoying spell traps. It's random, but hey, a hit's a hit. And then Duster. Yeah, Duster is just there for Rescue Ace, essentially. We've got Curry Card Divine Carnate. This card actually came up for me today against Fire King. They had Heat Soul, they had Ponix, and they had uh, Kirin and Garunix. So I tributed all of them and made a 6k body uh, for free. Ran over their Arvada, and then was able to make uh, Hita SP banish their last Kirin afterwards uh, by normal summoning an Ash Blossom, funny enough. So, no, she's great as a sideboard card just for games two, going, like going second. It's a good uh, search off of Snake Eyes Ash if you need it. That's about it. And then uh, these two, which I would probably drop from the side, since it's just so many fire decks, it's just Drusworm and uh, Magnemite. Um, they're there just for Labyrinth matchups, because Labyrinth is a difficult deck for this deck to deal with. Um, the If they have, like, skill drains and such, your deck just kind of crumbles. Okay. They need to stop their furniture from recurring. Because they have such a better, they have a better line of recursion and disruption than you, because they have that built-in disruption. Okay. So yeah, that's why I keep them. But if I was to drop them, I would probably put in like I don't know, build the sideboard with more thrust package in mind, with like evenlies, lightning storms, and just board breakers in general. Okay. Uh, if I wanted to main deck the cosmics. But yeah, that's the deck. Um, so yeah, typically you just want to see in your opening hands trooper or blaze accelerator. And then either King Sark, Inseti, Diabelle are wanted. You have so many cards that start things off. Also, one more card I forgot. I borrowed it from Kavan. It was a uh, Bonfire. One of, uh, I would run three, but they're not here until Tuesday, so I'm stuck. Uh, I was stuck with the one, but it came up. It searched me Trooper, and that felt great. Having uh, another access to Trooper is great. I run six copies of this card. Why not? It's worth the almost two hundred dollars it okay. costs. What? Expensive format. But yeah, overall, top eight: um, three Fire Kings, two Rescue Ace, and a Kashira. Yeah, all right, not bad. Not bad. Yep. Well, thank you for the profile, Adam. For sure. Thank you. Go team. Right. Brought to you by Team One Ice again, and we will see you guys later.